Israel's recently appointed security minister has visited the compound housing the Al-Aqsa Mosque in occupied East Jerusalem, a move Palestinians describe as provocative. Itamar Ben-Gavir was surrounded by security forces as he toured the site, which has religious significance for both Muslims and Jews. Israel's former prime minister, Yair Lapid, had warned such a visit will put lives in danger. Well, Sarah Hayat is at the Mount of Olives in occupied East Jerusalem. And Sarah, of course, he is one of the most controversial figures of the new far-right government, previously convicted of inciting racism. This seems almost certain to inflame tensions there. Absolutely, Neve. I mean, this decision to visit was uh, very clear from a few days ago. It just wasn't expected to be happening uh, this early and this soon. Uh, he, it was a very short uh, um, uh, trip, if you like, uh, to Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, or known as Temple Mount by the Jews. Uh, it was quick, it was short, and it was in the early hours of this morning. And that's no surprise because of the prov provocation that it would cause, especially amongst the Palestinians and uh, not just Palestinians, but the Muslim world. World. Um, now, he turned up, uh, the idea was that he had to go through security with police first. It had to be discussed, discussed rather with Netanyahu, which happened on Monday. But the indication was that this wouldn't happen until a few weeks' time. Here he was this morning, he turned up, he left, and before you knew it, there was very strong reaction. We've had strong reaction from the Palestinians who have called it unprecedented provocation. Uh, we've also uh, heard from Hamas in Gaza that has made it clear that if this happens, they, they've been saying this since Monday, if this happened, they were calling on Palestinian youth especially to mobilise and do something about this. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discontent towards this decision. Also, uh, on Monday, we heard from uh, Yai uh, Lapid, who is the former prime minister and now the leader of the uh, opposition within the uh, uh, Israeli new government. Now, Ben Gavir, uh, he is now the uh, national security minister, but he also has sweeping powers over the police, which came as no surprise that this decision would happen actually uh, very quickly. And he has. He turned up. And we're going to expect a lot of tension from the Palestinians. Already security has been stepped up amongst the Israelis. He also uh, made a statement saying that um, he wouldn't uh, be in any way, um, uh, uh, what's the word, um, he wouldn't be threatened in any way by Hamas or any threats against the Israeli government. This is someone who is pushing for the expansion of settlements. Uh, the new government, the Israeli new government, is a far right-wing, ultra-Orthodox government, and they've made this their absolute priority. We've seen an increased amount of tension in the last few weeks, and we're definitely expecting things to uh, turn up further throughout the day. Uh, Sarah, it's not been the best start of the year to it, uh, has it? Uh, there's been more conflict in the occupied West Bank. At least one teenager has been killed after Israeli forces entered the city of Jenin. What more can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, the uh, Israeli forces turned up in Bethlehem uh, to make an arrest at a refugee camp. In the process, there was uh, a lot of confrontations between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And as a result, a teenager was shot in the chest and killed. Now, this is not the only place where there have been confrontations. The same in Jenin, as well as on Monday, demolitions that happened in a village very close to Jenin, where two uh, families, two uh, young Palestinians who carried out an attack on an Israeli checkpoint last September. They were killed in that incident, but killed an Israeli within that attack. And as a result, the Israeli uh, forces came in, demolished the homes of their families. This is something that's against international law, but a, a mechanism that the Israelis have been using to teach Palestinians a lesson, if you like. That's what they've been saying. And also, they say to prevent any further attacks. Uh, this obviously goes against what the human rights organization says that these punitive measures are actually uh, punishing the family rather than those that carried out any of the attacks. So we're seeing a step up in tensions. 2022 was the most violent year within the occupied West Bank for Palestinians. We saw uh, more than 200 Palestinians killed within the tensions with the Israeli forces. Sarah Hayat in occupied East Jerusalem. Many thanks.